It's all good. I sent my doggy to daycare today. So. <laughs> Helps that I'm married to a daycare guy. All right, guys, welcome. Um, it's 9.30, uh, March 23rd. I'm Dr. Divi, and this is Sharon. Sharon? And Christine. Yay! And um, welcome, guys. This is uh, part one of our six-part webinar we're doing, and most of you should have the links, and if you're having any technical issues, just email us so we can help you out. But our six-part webinar is hopefully to help you deal with everything that's happening on the planet. And this also leads into a three-month program that we're, we were going to start anyways. The three of us have been talking about hosting an event together for a couple months now. So um, we were going to do a live event in April. That was the plan. <laughs> and um, then when all this happened, we moved it forward. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let us introduce ourselves so you can get an idea of how it works. Um, and a reminder, guys, I said this earlier, but typically my, um, my events like this that are free and public events, I typically record them. I typically reuse them and put them on like my podcast channel and YouTube channel. So if you're really like um, sensitive, you might want to start your, if you don't want people to watch you basically, um, you might want to shut your video off or you might want to leave it on. Totally up to you. Um, and as we do some intuitive work, we don't need to see your face. So if you want to, and we'll talk about what that means in a second, but I'm Divi. That's all I got to say. So Sharon, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Sharon, and uh, I'm an intuitive coach. I've been working with Divi for quite a while, uh, as well as Lynette Brown, who's um, a teacher that teaches with Divi the, a 12-month intuitive coaching course, which I was um, privileged to take. But I also, I do energy work, and I do women's groups, lots of women's groups, um, exploring the divine feminine, uh, and really just trying to live this life, this spiritual sort of life and uh, in everything I do. And I'm really excited to be here. Um, it's uh, come together very quickly, but what I'm finding in these times is that time and space seem to be shifting moment to moment. So I go with the flow. I'm just, you know, trying to live moment to moment to moment. So when this came up so quickly, it's perfect. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here with everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you, Divi and Christine. Thanks, Sharon. Christine. Ah, so excited to be here. And I'm so excited to see some of my other community on here as well. This is so fun. Um, so my name is Christine Bano, and um, like Sharon, I'm an intuitive coach as well. Um, I took Divi's 12-month uh, intuitive coaching program, which, and I fell in love with it. Um, I've been working with Divi for about Oh God, seven years maybe. <laughs> so a really long time. So um, I fall in love with the work and um, it found me. I didn't find it. It found me through uh, multiple rock bottom experiences. So um, it's been instrumental in my transformation and, and just uh, leading a more soul led life. Um, I'm also a business owner. So um, I own a boutique fitness studio called Sweatband City in North Vancouver. Um, so some of my clients are on here, which I'm super excited about to bridge these two worlds, um, which is super exciting. So yeah, I do that. I lead, lead um, wellness retreats as well. So um, work out, but they're secretly actually very uh, intuitive and energy based as well. So on the Sunshine Coast and expanding those as well. So that's exciting. Um, what else? I'm a mom to a little three-year-old, amazing, spicy little girl. And I have a dog named Pot Roast who may come and a little French bulldog who may come and say hi a few times uh, in and out. But um, yeah, I'm just super excited to be here. I'm so honored to be leading with Divi and Sharon and um, just to be a part of this. And yeah, it's definitely kept me grounded this work. So mm -hmm. through all this, so I'm just grateful. So, so nice to see some of you, meet some of you, and to see some familiar faces as well. Mm -hmm. so, thanks, Christine. And um, so through the class today and over the next six classes, um, we invite you to ask questions, talk to us through the chat button. And if you want to um, have us unmute you so that we can, we can discuss with you, feel free to. How we've set up each of the webinars is there's some content that all three of us will be teaching. And then if you can ask questions as we go and verbally near the end and if they're personal intuitive questions no problem if they're more general topic questions great so obviously one of the reasons that we want to host this even before it before um COVID came along was primarily because the three of us have been living eat breathing sleeping this work for for years myself a couple decades and the work literally changes our life like literally it will change how you interact with your loved ones it'll interact change how you work It'll change who you are on a cellular level and actually can heal as well, which is incredible. 
And with all this coming up, we decided that we want to move this further, like closer. And on a personal level, I, I truly believe that no matter how long you've been studying this work, no matter how long you've been engaged in this work, it's like you have to keep returning to it. One of the reasons that we have to keep returning to it is because the human mind doesn't want to grasp it right away. And one of the reasons the human mind doesn't want to grasp it right away is because it's pretty loud. And we'll talk about all of that as we go. Now, each of these six webinars are going to be completely different. So it's not a replay. Don't worry. And we will be live each of them. And again, Q&As are perfectly valid and as we go. So how we thought we'd launch today. Oh, I'll tell you like 20 seconds about me. I'm a family doctor by background because I know I don't know a lot of you, everyone. I'm a family doctor by background. I got into this work 100% by accident. About 20 years ago, I got quite sick. I won't go into the whole story. That led me into yoga, the physical aspect of healing my body, which then got me into the mental and emotional aspects and spiritual aspects. All three of us work as professional intuitives. And if you don't know what that means, what that means is we intuitively see, sense, feel energy. So when a client comes to see me for whatever's going on, health, relationships, money, whatever, I can see in their energy field what thoughts and emotions may be leading to it and then teach them how to shift their thoughts and emotions to make it better. That's like a nutshell of what we do. So as we go through the classes, if there's things that are being sparked, then again, feel free to ask and we'll intuitively tune in and help you out. Um, and I want to remind you guys, the work isn't hard, but it takes repetition, which is why we lead this into a 12-week course that starts in April. Uh, but let's just jump in. So let's close our eyes and just bring everyone together. Never meditated before, don't worry. Just close your eyes and get into your body and into your breath. Just let your deep belly breaths come in. There's nothing to worry about for this hour that we're together or really ever, but bring yourself into the now if you can. Try to leave all the distractions, the phones, the zing zangs outside of this room and just bring yourself here. So try to take about three or four more deep, low, slow flows of breath in and out. If you've left your energy with your partner, your kids, your dogs, your cats, just recollect your energy. There you go, and come back together. Knowing that everything that's said in this class stays in this class, knowing that this is a perfectly safe place, and knowing that there's only love for you. So you can actually visualize, imagine, sense, or see us all holding hands in a big, huge circle of love. So take about three or four more deep belly breaths. Feeling more centered, more calm, more connected, and possibly a little bit more in your body now. Knowing that anything you need to know, want to receive is a bit available to you. Right? And possibly open your heart just a millimeter more than it was before. Being open, receptive, and ready. Awesome. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. And welcome back, guys. Whew. Feel better, right? Eh? Coming back together. Awesome. So the first thing we're obviously going to talk about is the COVID. And we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about why it's here on the planet, what the messages are for us, and what we can do with it. So with this virus being on the planet, you know, one of the most common questions I've been asked over the last few weeks is, but why? Like, why is it here, Divi? And as a metaphysician, as a spiritual teacher, I mean, it's a really great question. And one of the big reasons here, her and Dan was talking about social, like, you know, I socially having to distance, right? We're all in our homes. Um, the, one of the main reasons is here is to have us go inwards. It's having us go inwards into ourselves. Just inwards. Into our own truth. Planet Earth needs us as humans to calm down. <laughs> and to just be more centered, be more connected, and be more whole. 
And there's so many ways to respond to what's going on right now. We can get in a crisis mode and go buy a thousand things, or we can be calm. And those decisions are second to second, moment to moment. One of the other reasons this is happening as we go inward and connect is to ask ourselves what we're doing in our life. Is it working? Am I in alignment with what I'm doing with my career? Am I in alignment with what I'm doing with my relationship? Am I in alignment with how I'm living my life? These are all like really valid and fair questions that we cannot answer when we're on the treadmill. Okay. And so a lot of this is about pulling inwards and listening within, which is actually partly why we set up this class in the three month course. Sharon, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, for, for me, it's, it's, it, I'm feeling all those feelings too. And I, I, I find that this time is for us to feel our feelings instead of rushing to the next thing and, and putting our feelings aside and rushing to, to do this, to do that. It's actually, I'm noticing people feeling their feelings, but not knowing what to do because they're not used to it, right? They're used to going, going, going on the treadmill. And so again, you know, there's lots of things out there to help us start to tune in. And that's another reason why I feel like this is so important to do this work now is so we can start to feel our feelings. Some of us have the time to go in and to, to face those fears, to see what's coming up. Like just not even to just sort of go, go into the fear, but see it, feel it and release it. So there's a lot of, um, yeah, I think there's just a lot of opportunities. And instead of us just looking at what we are afraid of and what's not working and everything out there, everything out there, it's to, to sort of look, okay, what are the opportunities showing up for me right now? Beautiful. Thanks. Thanks, Sharon. Christine. <laughs> Looking for some personal uh, points. Um, yes, this is such a wild time um, for me personally. I've been working with Ivy on some of this as well, just because I'm seeing it in myself and also the clients that I'm working with. But I'm in two minds. Part of me, of course, is like, you know, feeding in a little bit to the, you know, um, collective energy. And then there's part of me also who's very peaceful and calm. Anytime I go outside in nature or I just even have a second to slow down, I hear my voice again, that internal soul's voice of like, you're, you're safe. This is all for your transformation. This is, you're totally okay. Um, so it's definitely a bit of a wild ride, just making sure that I'm grounded and making sure I'm feeling my own energy versus others. And obviously when I'm working with people, just understanding that I'm not picking up only their energy, but other people's. So if you're in a similar place where you're empathic or you're, you feel people's feelings, um, just questioning is that mine or is that somebody else's? And just knowing that the first answer that comes in will be the right one. For me, it's always usually, no, it's not mine. Sometimes it is. Um, and this has just been a great opportunity for me to reevaluate my relationships, my life, my, the way that I'm showing up. Um, I'm self-recovering, addicted to busyness person. I get a lot of satisfaction and self-worth out of moving really fast, accomplishing, getting things done. So that's been pretty wild to just look at and to say what am i getting out of this is this serving me and it's what's caused me causes me a lot of anxiety so um taking little steps to slow down to witness what actually puts me in that state so for me it's actually something i've recently done is deleted social media and my email off of my phone because it's just too easy for me to tap it tap it feed into it um, and keep myself in that cycle because if I'm addicted to it, it's unconscious and I'm just, I'm just doing it unconsciously. So um, I'm meditating more. I'm just taking more time to ground. So I'm actually just, I feel like coming back into tune with myself and with the pace of nature and the, the way that I'm actually supposed to be operating that feels really good for me at least. Um, so it's been a pretty interesting time to notice my habits, my patterns, you know, where I self-sabotage myself, where I really want to get hooked into those patterns again. So um, it's taking practice for sure, but it's, I'm living proof it can work. <laughs> it does work. The work works. <laughs> so, yeah. And the other thing I want to add is that this is also time to figure out how we can serve. So this is for the three of us, it's our service to you. But then even above and beyond this, I was at the bagel shop the other day, lined up outside with 10 other people. And this lovely gentleman with a walker came up to line up behind me. I'm like, absolutely not go to the front of the line. You know what I mean? It's like, who can I serve? How can I serve? And as we're social distancing each other, it's like, 
am I in fear or can I send this person love? It's that simple. It's like, oh, love. They're coughing, oh, let me send them love. It's like little things like that, as we start to do it to each other, become like a abdomino, a spiral, and we actually can have a huge impact on each other, even with all the distancing. We can hop on calls like this, we can love each other as we're passing them in the grocery store, we can serve somebody behind us. So maybe think for a second, who and what can you serve? Because we're all in this together. So, and guys, questions and answers are totally cool, so feel free, feel free to type them in the chat box. So that was part one of what we want to talk about. So the next part is we want to talk a bit about tonight's, today's class is geared around something we call mind voice versus spirit voice. And if you have a piece of paper and pen, great. If you don't, you want to type into your phone, totally cool. It's an exercise or a process that I typically teach in almost all, all of my classes that I teach. And it can be completely transformative when we start to do it. So I'm going to get just a lot of, the, a lot of my talking, I mean, you can tell I love to talk, is to engage your thoughts, to engage your brain. Okay, because if I don't talk to your brain, your brain's going to go, oh, what about coffee? Oh, those cookies look good, right? Because they do, they're right over there. But we have two voices. We have a mind, and then we have a spirit voice. Now, you could call the spirit voice your divine voice, your inner voice, your truth voice, your love voice. I don't care what you use. I'm going to use the word divine voice. Now, if that voice, if that word rubs you, change it. Call it your love voice. Call, call it your spirit voice. I don't care what you call it. So we have these two voices, the mind and the divine. The divine is your essence. When you come on the planet, you've got it. When you leave the planet, you've got it. It's always there. It's the quiet, gentle voice. It's the quiet, soft, nudging voice that's always there 24-7. And I don't need to define what the mind does. The mind is the chatterbox, right, that we can all relate to. A lot of humans call it the monkey mind. It's got lots of terms to it, the ego mind. I don't care what you call it. It's the constant thoughts. Now, a lot of the work I teach people has this fundamental principle that we're going to jump into over and over and over again. There's the mind, and then there's the divine, two voices. Now, what this is a key principle right now for you to understand. Our emotions, an emotion is an energy in motion, whether it be anger, fear, sadness, resentment, joy, happiness, love. Every emotion is only telling us one thing. It's the overlap or not overlap of the mind and the spirit. So what the heck does that mean, Divi? It means that our mind, the chatter, chatter, chatter is thinking a thought. And this is the crazy thing. At the same time, your mind is thinking that thought. Your spirit voice, your divine voice is also thinking a thought all the time. That's the most crazy thing. But the annoying thing, and I jokingly say that, the annoying thing about the spirit voice is it's very quiet. It's not rushed. And it's soft and it's gentle, and it's repetitive, and it doesn't yell like this. I'm joking. I did that with love. This is to wake you guys up, right? It doesn't. But see, what you focus on, you make bigger. So if you're constantly focusing on the mind, you're never going to hear the spirit. But 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, your spirit is always active. But we're trained in our human consciousness to really rev up the mind. Now, just so you guys know, Prior to about 12, 13, 14 years of age, your spirit voice was the loudest. So each and every, no matter how much trauma you dealt with, each and every single one of you has spent about a dozen years of your life where your spirit voice was louder. Just so you know, if you're like, that's impossible. Just so you know, if you ever go watch children at playground, you know, th this is why kids are still out there trying to play because their spirit's like, let me go play, right? So spirit voice you all have had at least 12 years of it being louder. Then puberty kicks in, da, 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 and then the mind gets louder. So you, here's your emotions. Your emotions are telling the overlap or not. So here's your mind and here's your spirit. Two different thoughts or voices about every topic. If the content of the mind, the thought of the mind, is overlapped with the content of your spirit voice, then the emotion is joy, love, freedom, ease, ah, those emotions. If your mind is thinking a different thought opposite of your spirit, then you'll experience the opposite emotions, fear, anger, resentment, worry, overwhelmment. Let's give you an example. You're driving along 
and someone cuts you off in traffic. We're not, none of us are driving right now, but it's a normal day. You're driving along. Someone cuts you off in traffic and you get angry. It's, it's not because the person cut you off in traffic. It's because your mind is thinking that this is wrong and your divine isn't. And this is the crazy stuff about this work is it takes time to figure out what the heck can my divine be did thinking? Why is this happening? And it takes time to really overlap the mind with the divine, the mind with the divine. So during this time of this crisis, to use that word, when I've been meditating around what's happening on the planet, you guys are going to laugh. I got, you, guys, you, got, you guys might laugh. When I sit and ask, okay, not, I don't ask necessarily what's this about, but when I ask them, when I ask my energies, guides, whatever you call it, like how can I get my mind more overlapped with spirit, right? Because my mind will go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And what I hear all the time is, your spirit is never affected by this. Just think about that. There is a part of you that's never affected by this, ever. Wouldn't that be cool to have that more as a chronic thought? And as a physician by background, I so know that our immune system, our well-being of our immune system is 100% depend, not 100%, but a large percent dependent, more than we give credit to, to our emotional realm. Mm -hmm. If our emotions are, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, then we're more likely to get sick. And there's tons of studies. If you want those studies, send me an email, send them to you. But if we're, and a lot of us can relate to that. We get sick when we're in this panic mode. So basically our emotions are telling us, mind says one thing, the divine says something different. And what Sharon and Christine were saying is bang on. This time is about going inward. What are my emotions? How can I get my mind to overlap with my divine? Because this is the annoying thing. The divine will never move. The divine will never agree with your mind that says your, your, your partner is a jerk. Your divine will never overlap with your mind that says there's something wrong and crazy. Does that kind of make sense? So the div we have to get our minds to overlap with the divine. Does that make sense to you guys? We're going to take you through a process in just a second. But I just want you to sit with that, especially if that's the first time you've ever heard it. And guys, I teach this all the time. And every time I teach this, every single time I teach this, I learn something just so you guys know. Mm -hmm. Christine, Sharon, do you guys want to add anything to that before I go through the process? Um, I can uh, attest to the immune system and <laughs> dependent on emotions. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, Saturday, I felt like I was getting a cold, like I could feel my immune system. Not, it, I tuned in and I said, am I getting the virus? And they said, no. I, my spirit guide said, no, you're not. Um, and I said, what, okay, what is this? Because I could feel everything. I started getting all of some, like everything just, my nose, my throat, everything just started feeling my super low energy and I was, you know, freaking out a little bit. And I just heard like, when you start to act on the callings that we keep dropping in, you will shift this instantly. Like you'll like that. And I was like, part of my mind was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm going to be sick, whatever. And then <laughs> I made, I literally made some changes. I deleted my apps that day. I went outside in nature, obviously far away from people, but I was like in the woods alone. Um, and I changed, I started meditating more and just like all the things that I know that bring me back to balance. And I am like 100% okay today. Like with it, even yesterday, I could feel it going really deep and then it just started lifting and today it's completely gone like I have zero symptoms so it just was a really good reminder to myself of how fast I can shift it it just depends on how long I want to hold on to the stories how long I want to go into my patterns and how fast that momentum goes but because I've been doing the work for so long now it just it's fascinating and wild to just see myself be able to bring myself back into balance with my body just that quickly anyways awesome thank you for sharing that story yeah. yeah. And, and I find, um, for me, you know, when I start my mind voice and my divine voice are not in sync, my body will start to talk to me very fast. And so recently my hips have been so sore and just locking up for no reason, like just suddenly. And then it dawned on me the other day, every time I go into that fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of, oh my God, what's going to happen? You know, what's the news going to say tomorrow? My hips literally lock up. And so it's really about, you know, watching for the cues from our body as well that are telling us that our divine voice and our mind voice are not on the same page. And so for me, it's been a lifelong of listening to my body. And now I'm finally getting that my body is telling me when I'm out of alignment. 
So very powerful. Thanks, Sharon. So, so guys, just so you know, if you've never worked with any of us before and you're like, who are these crazy women? Um, the three of us occasionally through the call, I'm going to do it right now. We will tell you I'm getting a message and like, you're like, oh, I've lost my mind. Guys, I know, I know I'm a family doctor. I get it. I know I get it. I totally get it. But the more you do this work, the more you wake up that intuition um, that's really loud. Okay. So I was getting messages, Sharon and Christine were speaking. And again, if, if that thought of they got a message kind of threw you off, leave it alone. She got an intuitive hit. Use that word. I'm good with that. So I got an intuitive hit just now to say to you guys, and I'm going to upset some of you and I don't mean to upset some of you. Thank you, Megan. Um, I don't mean to upset some of you. And this is more of an advanced concept. So you can throw it in the garbage if you don't like it. What really helps during times like this and really the rest of your life is to recognize that you don't actually die. Take a breath with that. The body is just the, 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 the transporter of your soul. For those of us who have children, not that you need to have kids for this experience or to recognize this, your kid comes out ready. My kid came out computer ready. And like, he knows how to use Instagram. I, like, you know, like he, you know, kids come out ready for the planet more so than we are. And kids have, you know, so his body, my son's body, um, Christine's daughter's body is just a storehouse for their soul. So the body for all of us, whether we like it or not, is going to eventually disintegrate. Whether we be 20, 80, 90 years old, it's going to go. But the soul goes on. So what's really helpful, I, you know, they asked me to say it was, guys, if you can let go of that fear, life gets so much easier. If you talk to people that near death experiences, they're like, ah, oh, all good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just, again, if that thought threw you way off, throw it in the garbage. And one thing I say to a lot of my classes and almost all my clients I see, if I say a hundred things and you didn't like 10, throw out the 10, take the 90. Cool. Cool. Okay. Let's go to an exercise. So, um, ah, <laughs> Dan, I love that. Okay. So Dan, I got gotcha. you. And so Dan wrote in, I love this. I wish I could tell that to my nervous system sometimes. So a lot of the work, Dan, and thank you so much is to be, and we're going to, cause we're going to do this in the exercise in a second be conscious of the thoughts before the nervous system gets fired and Dan and everybody in the next two or three weeks or no, sorry, two, three weeks, two or three classes, uh, we'll be teaching about momentum and energy and vibration a little bit deeper. And definitely in the 12 week course, we'll be diving into that because this work isn't about like, yeah, this is a red shirt, but it's really, how do I know it's a red shirt? Does that make sense? Like, how do I like actually know like each thread? So in the 12 weeks, we'll be diving into this stuff, right? So let's go into this next process. Um, so grab a blank piece of paper and pen if you have one, or just use your phone, okay? And draw a line down the middle of the page. And, and at the top of the, of, the, of, the, um, of the paper, write down any topic in your life that you feel kind of eh on. Don't write the topic that makes you go, oh, love. Write a topic like, um, you know, if it's about work and exhaustion or, um, you know, the COVID and being afraid to turn the news on. So write the topic, just a few, few don't write a huge paragraph because you know the topic and write your primary emotion or emotions. Okay. We, again, we want more of those not so good feeling ones like anger, worry, resentment, sadness, overwhelmment, whatever. And I love it. Everyone's scribbling. I didn't have to finish telling them what to do. <laughs> just write down the topic. So I need to here going, I don't have a topic. I'll give you one. I'm teasing you. Uh, write down the topic and write down the emotion. Okay, that's all I want you to do right now. Okay. You can be brief or long. With, and guys, this is where you want to actually use the three of us a lot. Okay, that's what we're here for. Okay, so on the left hand of the column, write mind voice, and on the right hand, use spirit voice. Okay, and so now what I want you to do on the left hand column is just write down two or three sentences. Don't write a book. Two or three sentences are thoughts that circulate in your head, in your mind, to create the thoughts you've got that are creating the emotion. So for example, let's use the COVID just as an example. Let's just say you wrote up there, I'm afraid of getting it, I'm afraid of getting sick, and so the emotion is fear. Then on the left hand, the mind would say, well, there's a thousand, and Dan's gonna laugh because he's in California. There's a thousand something cases in Canada, and Dan's like, there's a thousand cases in my city, I'm joking. But um, you know, I, there's a thousand something cases in Canada, um, my neighbor is coughing, whatever 
whatever thoughts you've got, you write on the left-hand side of the page, just two or three thoughts. And then as you read them, you're probably going to feel the emotion. Okay. That's just an example. And after you're done, look up at me so I know you're done. And you don't write it, want to write a textbook. You don't want to give tons of momentum to the mind. Just write two or three sentences. You guys are good? Give another second. are good almost a year done okay so i'll start talking um before i take you into this meditation so here's the thing this is the crazy thing your spirit the other the right hand side of the column has statements it wants to write down and right now you actually don't even know what they are and christy i love what you wrote down these are thoughts that i haven't allowed myself to say out loud and i say that a lot to my clients i said this to my husband the other day clients will tell me things that they're afraid to say to anybody else, right? So you writing it down, Christy, oh, and all of you, thank 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 you, because it does no good up here. It does no good, okay? So writing it down frees you a bit. Now, here's a crazy thing. Whatever emotion you have up there, your spirit, the other side of the column, has other thoughts to counteract the thoughts that don't feel good to create a new emotion. Do you get that? So let's just say you had COVID up there and one of the thoughts is, I'm afraid I'm gonna get it. This is what spirit would say. Spirit would say, your spirit can never get it. See how much that feels better? You might not like that, but that's okay. And, or let's just say you say, um, you know, my neighbor has a cough and your spirit would say, yes, but you are safe because you're divinely supported. And if you keep repeating those thoughts, do you see how they feel better? So we're gonna go into a mini meditation right now. And we're going to try to empty the mind because spirit, you each have a spirit voice. Each and every single one of you have a spirit voice. And right now you can't hear it. And I love you and respect you for that. And guys, I don't always hear my spirit voice either. And neither does Sharon and neither does Christine at all. Right, guys? Right? We don't always hear it. Right? So that's why we have to keep returning to the work. Keep working with other people. Right? So in a second, when I take you to the meditation, the idea of this next part of the exercise is to be conscious that there may be a different way to think. Got it, guys? So close your eyes. And take a few deep belly breaths in and out. With your eyes closed, just settle into your body. Belly rises and belly falls. Inhale and exhale. Belly lifts, belly lowers. With your eyes closed, bring yourself into your body and bring yourself into your breath. If this is the first time you've meditated or you've never meditated before, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter if you're an experienced meditator or have meditated just to a few apps before or never ever, every time you close your eyes to meditate is like it's the first time. Beginner's mind. So your eyes closed, take your breath in and out to a low, slow flow of breath. Place one hand on your chest wall and one hand on your belly. And just notice which hand is moving more. Typically, the chest wall moves a little bit more because we breathe more shallow. So now, breathe into your belly hand. As a group, exhale together and inhale for one, two, three belly lifts. Exhale, one, two, three belly falls. Inhale, one, two, three belly lifts, 
exhale, one, two, three, belly falls. Keep that low, slow flow of breath in and out. Low and slow, calm and deep, easy and relaxed. If you wish to relax your hands down, feel free to. Just keep that breath in and out, low, slow flow at your own pace. The more you belly breathe, the more you increase your parasympathetic nervous system. This heightens your immune system and this creates an immediate sense of calm. This time, as a group, exhale together right now. Good. Now inhale for one, two, three. Exhale for one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Keep that low, slow flow of breath in and out. Cyclic, slow, and easy. Making the exhales a little bit longer. And just noticing your breath in and out. Belly rises and belly falls. If there is a chatter of thoughts, imagine yourself sitting outside on a beautiful, sunny day. There's a gorgeous blue sky, and then there are a few clouds. Watch as the clouds begin to drift away. Clouds are your thoughts. And after a few breaths, all you've got left is the blue sky. As you settle more into your belly breathing, you're actually starting to heighten your spirit voice. Stay in your belly breathing. Now stay tuned inside to your inner voice. Stay tuned in there. The yawning is normal. The fatigue is normal. This is your body moving through dense energy, guys. This is really good. So as your breaths get deeper and slower, calmer and easier, you're waking up your spirit voice. Do not open your eyes and don't even think. You know what's on your piece of paper. Just ask in your belly breathing, give me one thought that's slightly different than what I wrote down, that feels better, that might be my spirit speaking to me. And now as I get quiet, and the Tibetan bowls get louder, pay attention to your spirit voice. Just, and if you get distracted, go back to your belly breathing. Now let your spirit voice speak to you. You can't get this wrong, guys.
Deep in your breath. Checking in with that inner voice. Staying calm and connected. Some of you are going to want to stay here in this quiet space. Others of you will may want to write down a few things that you receive from spirit. And just notice if your mind's trying to fight it. And just write down a few things. What the new emotion is that you're feeling. We're going to do this for a few more minutes. And then we're going to recollect in the group. A few more breaths. And notice how much, even if it's just 2%, 20%, 90% calmer you are now, more connected. Guys, can you feel the difference, Christine, Sharon? Can you feel the difference? Crazy, eh? Yeah. Okay. Gently starting to bring yourselves back, wiggle your fingers and your toes, deepen your breath. And check in how you're feeling before you open your eyes. If you already open your eyes, cool. But how do you feel? Just feel it. Oh, that's so fun now. Oh, now it's some fun stuff. I get excited by some stuff like this. I know, I know, I know. I need more, need more something in my life. I'm joking. This is the stuff that makes me excited. All right, so um, now we're going to chat. And this is where it helps to, like, talk to us. Stacey already typed in some great stuff. So um, Sharon, Chris, Sharon, do you want to grab some of Stacey's comments? Sorry, Stacy's. Yeah. So guys, what we're going to do now is Sharon's reading that. What we're going to do now is we're going to help you guys. First off, before we go on, I want to check in. How are you guys feeling? Are you feeling, uh, feeling a little, those of you who have your cameras open, do you feel a bit better? Yes or no? Yay. Thank God. Okay. Thank you. Um, and guys, that wasn't me, Sharon and Christine. That was, you know, you guys throw this in the garbage. If you want to remember 10% throw in the garbage, whatever you don't like. That was your divine support team all around you. We all have a divine support team. Prior to this class, the three of us were soul connecting with each of you guys, and we we're creating your divine support team around you. We all have non-physical energy. They helped you just now. If you want to know more, we'll teach you all that stuff. It's so fun. Anyways, leave that alone. So right now, we're going to feel more grounded. Awesome, Katie. So right now, we're going to dive in, okay? And we're going to see what came up for you guys. And we're here to help. If somebody felt like Stacy typed in, thank you, Stacey, for, so Stacey, for being um, honest and telling us what's going on for you. But now some of you guys might be stumbled by what we wrote and now we're going to help you. Or you got nothing or like, it's like, oh, calm, safe. Awesome, Jamie. Sharon, do you want to jump in? Sure. <clears throat> so Stacy, thank you for your, for your question and comment. So uh, do you mind repeating it? Because when they watch the recording, they oh, won't. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, my bad. Stacy wrote in saying, I've been trying to figure out how to approach a topic with my mom. I'm a recovering alcoholic and I'm 90% sure she's an adult child of an alcoholic but she doesn't know this about herself. I keep having dreams about helping her heal. I just don't know how to approach her. Spirit says, learn, fill yourself with knowledge and share. So Stacy, uh, great question. Your, your spirit is talking to you already. Your st spirit is giving you the question. Basically, it's about how you are showing up with your mom. It's not about what to do or what to get her to do. It's about how you're showing up in love, how you are really walking the talk. Because when we enter into a relationship with someone with that love tone and we hold the space for them to feel the love, 
then they are going to help, that's going to help them raise their vibration into that. She doesn't need to know that she's the child of an alcoholic. She's, her mind doesn't need to know that because what you are doing is you're working from the spirit level to help her in this earth plane. So just by being in your heart, just by holding the space of love for her, you're in service. And then to, to just learn these techniques, these techniques are going to help you to help her. And eventually maybe she'll start asking you questions about what you're learning and how you're being. So really there's nothing to do. It's how you show up and be with your mom. Christine, Divi. Um, I want to, um, no, that's perfect. Uh, Christine, you okay if I jump to the next thing? Yeah, I just, I was picking up the exact same thing as Sharon. Um, Stacey, I just keep hearing the same thing. The only thing, just, I'm a recovering codependent as well. <laughs> and just like, I, I love to fix people and teach them and all the things. But what I've learned is hands off. And the only person that I, my greatest bit of service is to just work on myself, heal myself. Um, and I just, I show up, my energy is completely different. And then, and just by you showing up in that way, a softer, you know, loving space, um, you'll be healing her and, and sharing that message without any words. So. so I got a private message. I won't say from who says they can't stop crying and they don't know why mm -hmm. it's a hundred percent normal. There's often two reasons we can't stop crying. The most common is because there's this whole, all of this love over here, which is why the three of us work as professional intuitives. <laughs> there's all this love over here and we tap into it. It's like, Oh my God. And it brings us to tears. And the other reason often we're crying is because um, someone mentioned it earlier, because we're shoving away and ignoring what we're feeling. So it's like almost sometimes a combination of that. But a lot of times it's the first one that there's so much love. And then sometimes it's facing what's going on for us. So that person who typed that in, I want to say that to you. Um, another thing that we got in from Bridget, I'm just going to read this because when they watch the recording, they can't read the, read the comments. Yeah. Um, Bridget wrote in, I'm so confused. How do I know if the other thoughts I have that tell me I will be okay, et cetera, aren't my mind trying to make me feel better? Well, this is, I'm going to grab that. Um, I noticed I grabbed the easy ones. I'm joking. Um, Bridget, <laughs> Christine's laughing. Uh, Bridget, the thing is, especially if this is a new thing for you, which I sense it is a new idea to you, the ego is always going to fight us. Okay. The, that the ego mind is always going to fight us. And the thing is, you know, everything we want, Bridget, everybody, everything we ever want is because we think that when we have it, we're going to feel better. I want a million dollars because I'm going to feel better. I want a new home because I'm going to feel better. I want a new lover because I'll feel better. And all of those things are for that part of wanting to feel better, right? Spirit always, 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 always feels better. So if you are receiving thoughts, intuitive hits, intuitive nudges that are, have you feel better, trust that. And it's very normal for a mind to go, abba, abba, abba. When I first started uh, practicing, I used to think, yabba, 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 yabba. And then I would watch people come back going, I feel so much better. I'm so much happier. I'm like, okay, there must be some logic. There must be something here. So if your mind's fighting you, Bridget, it's completely normal, like 100% normal. And just accept and allow that there's a part of you that is complete love. Christine, Sharon, do you want to add anything to that, guys? It's great. All right. And there's other ones. So it's going to keep going here. I knew there'd be a bunch. Linda writes, I'm feeling better. I'm reaching out to my family to help them. I now know I have to detach from the outcome. Nice, Linda. That's huge. Um, I can offer. It's up to them. My spirit is strong, stronger. The question she's asking, how do I protect me? Guys, do you want, do you want, want to grab that? Christine? Um, I'm going to speak from experience, the ways that I protect, because of course, you know, there's, I, the ways that I protect myself is, um, during just all of this, if I'm feeling like I'm in a vulnerable space is I don't watch the news. Um, I trust that anything that's of importance will, I will receive from somebody who I'm still speaking with. Um, I find the news quick triggering. So I just, I, I detach from that. Um, like I said, deleting my apps, I protect myself that way. Cause I feel like sometimes there's just so much information coming in and, and if I'm in a place where I'm, I feel grounded and I'm able to look at it and receive it, then I'm, then I will engage with it. Um, meditation. So I protect myself with meditation, clearing processes, um, just doing anything that feels like self care to me. So I protect myself in that way where just taking baths, reading meditation, um, 
belly breathing, uh, reading books that feel in alignment, just anything. I, I just use that as protection, just really like disengaging. I find is actually my biggest form of self care right now is just disengaging from anything that I find triggering or puts me in that state of panic button. Like if I feel the panic button go off from something, then I just, um, yeah, I just disengage from it and I just remove myself from the situation. So that's how I, I currently am protecting myself. And the other small things to add to that, um, bang on Christine. Um, the other small things to add to that is when we realize that we are part of something much bigger, part of something much bigger, the divine that can never, ever die or get hurt, then there's nothing to protect from. We are forever love and care for. And I know some of the concepts I'm going to say are way out there, but just whatever you can grab from that. There's a bunch coming in, guys. I'm just going to go through them. If that's okay with you too? Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Harmony writes in, and Sharon, I'll grab, get you to grab this one. I'm constantly doubting my divine voice. I often think that I'm forcing what I need to hear, what the divine really wants me to hear. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I know this one um, for sure. So for me, when that happens, when that starts to happen and, and it's like, I get split energy, right? Like, so I've, I've got this sort of mind voice and this divine voice, and then I kind of go back and forth. I I'm with you. I was there the other day and I just couldn't get out of it. So again, it's doing all those self care things. I will go for a walk. I will look at the trees, like just literally look at the trees or the flowers. I will, you know, watch a comedy. I've got my list of comedies on Netflix. I, um, I'll go into gratitude. I'll journal. I will. So basically a lot of what Christine was just talking about. I have a list of things that I know help me get back into alignment. And I, you know, I highly suggest that you just write down a whole list of things that you can do so that when it takes you out, you can just look at them and pick one. Because sometimes when our divine voice and our mind voice are going like this and we're, and we're doubting ourselves, doubt is the mind voice. Doubt is the ego, right? And that's all it is. It's that little subpersonality that's like doubt, doubt, doubt. And everything you think or, or say, it, it's going to come in as doubt. So it's really having specific things that you can go back to, that you can break that momentum, you can refocus. And going into your heart, talking to a friend, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. I'm so grateful that, you know, it's spring. I'm so grateful it's a sunny day today. I'm so grateful that I have food in my fridge. I'm so grateful that I can actually sit here and be with all of you. Just those little things, but to just recognize that that's your ego voice going into doubt. That's not your divine, right? Thanks, Sharon. And guys, if we, we're going to do our best to get to all the questions, but we're back on on Wednesday at 5.30, I think. So if I don't get to all of them, my apologies, but we'll do our best, okay? Um, Dan writes in, my mind revolves around insomnia. I have had insomnia and I'm freaked out that if I don't sleep, I won't have a good immune system. That's fair. Spirit said that I need to let go of control. <laughs> Because me trying to control it is the problem. <laughs> Love how Christine's laughing. Release the fear, your immune system goes up. Also got that my purpose is not fulfilled yet. I have a lot more to do. Awesome, awesome hit dance. That's awesome. And control, I mean, all of us have control. And especially as a masculine on the planet, you guys are like, it's more trained to be that, right? Right, Christine? And right, Sharon? Like, right? And I'm glad you saw that. And the one thing that we're going to teach either Wednesday or Friday or in the three-month course is the only thing, and this takes time to get, guys, the only thing you have control over is this second and your vibration in this second, right now. This is all you got, guys. That's it. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. You have no control over anything else. Does that resonate with you guys? Nothing else. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. That's all you got, guys. All right, Stacy's thanking you, Sharon. So that's thank you to you. Can I just add one thing? Sure, honey, go ahead. It's for Dan. I just keep hearing something for Dan. Um, I just keep hearing your, this is like such a gift. If you can recognize this moment as a gift right now, because you're just being asked, I keep hearing surrender. If you can just go into that moment of like surrender. And then also I just keep hearing, if you can get quiet enough, um, you will hit a point I'm hearing soon where you'll just, um, I just keep hearing, right. You're going to write and you're going to get so clear on your purpose. Cause I just, I'm feeling what you're saying right now about you're not being in your purpose. I just hear like, there's so much more heart centered for you. Um, in your life moving forward and it's just like it's a small shift but i just keep hearing get really quiet get clear and start to write and it's gonna just like unfold so easily for you 
you're super powerful, like uber powerful. That's what I keep hearing. So <laughs> bang on girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked it down before. I know that. I think you just typed something into you. Um, Jennifer writes, I had an epiphany. My old self came from a place of deep trauma, which ultimately led me always to search for love that I have to ha have to be perfect to receive love. Oh God, I know this one that I was not good enough to receive love that I was never chosen by partners. I desire that there's always someone better. I just realized that I don't allow that love. in. wow, that's huge. Thanks, Jen. She's awesome guys. You guys are killing me here. All right. Um, these are great. Okay. The yeah buts and what, okay. And the forest leaves. Okay. Perfect. I mean, these, some of these are prime. Okay. Um, Julie writes in, I've been sulking at home now. I knew that I should gather my heart and start giving a little instead of waiting to be given to. Beautiful. Amon writes, um, I gotta make this bigger, make my life easier. <laughs> I went through mild depression a couple months ago. It was because I was not safe to my spirit vice right on them. And I let my mind and courage take over. I was letting fear control. Even though I have been doing this work for some time now, it's so easy, yes, to fall back into the pattern. If I abandon my divine self, you nailed it. I'm in a gotcha girl because, yeah, we all fall into it, right, guys? So normal. Julie writes out, the sun is out and my hunting boards are, are busy diving and hovering and chasing each other. I love that. Um, Emily writes, the sun started to brighten through my window. When we meditated, while well, I heard, we are here for you. Oh my gosh, I cried up a storm. By my spirit voice isn't always a clear solution, but I know the overall messages are of love and support. I'm supported no matter what. Love it. Awesome. Thanks, Julie, for responding here. Joe writes, so happy to have joined the webinar. I was working on my intuition and connecting with my guides and divine team. Now that I have the time to do so, I was wondering how to differentiate from the mind and divine voice. So very thankful. Okay, so you got it. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Wow. I thought they were okay. Perfect. I had the questions minimized, so I couldn't see what was going on. So awesome. Awesome. Wow. That was it's almost 10 30. I just all the chat buttons. I thought there were going to be a ton more questions. So, um, oh wait, there's another question that came in. Um, my biggest limit is to listening to my divine voice is impatience. I know I want to rush to the answer. I can't hear the voice so much that I have a hard time sitting quietly waiting for it. And that's the thing, Laura, is that the divine is quiet soft and repetitive but we have to be willing to let go of as dan said control and try to figure it out to listen which is why almost all teachers of this work teach meditation and it's the hardest thing right guys it's the hardest thing to sit still in this craziness so tonight's tonight's today's class has been about mind versus spirit i'll take it in christine and share i want to add anything in a second but we're but the next week is like so Every class is different, okay? So um, I, we're gonna be teaching about momentum, vibration and different things, and then, and then um, even deeper in the, in the 12 weeks that starts April 9th. But what I'm gonna, gonna ask is to see if Sharon or Christine want anything to add before I, as I look at this comment. Sharon, do you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add, be gentle with yourselves. Like we're all going through this together and it looks different for each one of us. So try not to judge yourself about what's going on or what you're doing or what you're not doing. Try to be as gentle with yourself as possible and just love yourself and love other people from that place of, you know what, I'm here now in this time and space for a reason. And whatever is coming up is coming up. So just be gentle. Christine, do you have anything? There's two more comments coming on. So go ahead, Christine. Sorry, if this is just any more any, any more comments, and then I'm just going to answer the last two questions that came in. Um, I just kept hearing earlier um, what what Sharon was saying about writing. What could be helpful um, for some people is to write a list. Um, I have people do this in my retreats all the time. Is like write a little like list of all the things that either make you feel calm, that light you up, that bring you peace. It's just having that list. I mean, we have enough things to know. It's just identifying even like what triggers me and what brings me joy or what makes me feel calm. And then just trying to spend more time, trying to eliminate anything that's in your power off of the list of, you know, maybe that brings you anxiety or that, you know, triggers you. And then maybe just try to spend more time in the place of softness and surrender and, you know, just that, that space. Um, yeah. And every feeling is something I'm learning and mastering <laughs> is, is feelings is, is just letting whatever, just loving whatever arises. So whatever arises, just loving it and and not pushing it away. Because I know for myself, whenever I push an emotion away, it just buries deeper and then it comes out sideways at some point. So 
I'm just, if I'm in a place of joy and feeling really excited, like I am right now, I let myself feel it. But I'm also, if I'm feeling in a state of fear or anxiety, um, I'm just learning to, that if I feel it in the moment versus burying it, it actually can pass through me. Like I'm just allowing it. I'm not afraid of the emotion anymore. I'm just allowing it to be there, knowing and trusting that it will transcend really quickly and much faster than if I don't let it be there. So um, that's what I keep hearing as well. Awesome. Thank you. So just, you're welcome to everyone who's thanking us. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back on Wednesday. I want to answer there's two other questions that came in um, that I want to address as we wrap. And I'm so glad that you got a lot of you guys got clarity and enjoyed it. And Wednesday is going to be great too. But the classes lead into each other and I will do the recording and send it to you guys. So, um, and somebody asked me if you can share the links. Um, Tasha, Sarah, thank you guys for sharing the links with people. Mm -hmm. Two important questions that came around kids. If you guys have a few minutes for those of you who, um, who are still here. Uh, um, really, really important questions actually that came in. So one of them was, do, 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 um, let me scroll up here. I told my 10 30 is running a few minutes late. She'll be fine. Okay. So one of them was the really, really important questions. Um, Robin writes in, I'm struggling with fear when my kids are with their dad at the moment. My, my dad, so her dad passed away unexpectedly in the summer and she's going through a divorce. So her kids are with the soon to be ex. Uh, there's uncertainty and breathing having been par for the course but I'm afraid that she can't protect them. So Robin, I'll grab that and then um, see if these guys want to add anything. And then there's another question about kids in a second here. So um, Robin, the thing is, our children choose us, right? And our children also, like the soul knows everything. And I, that's really hard for us to really believe, but the soul sees beyond the mirrors of time. The soul knows that a divorce could be coming. The soul knows, and this one, you know, it takes a while for us to get, the soul chooses the dad who's grumpy. The soul chooses the dad who's not always present. The guy soul chooses these things. And, you know, I, I can feel some of you, I'm rubbing you in the wrong way, um, but that's okay. Our soul chooses this stuff. So the soul of your kids knew that this was coming up and knew they'd be fine. And so you have to just send those kids knowing that on every level, it's going to serve them, even if it doesn't serve us. Christine, Sharon, do you want anything before I grab the next question? Thank you, I think so. You guys are good? Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, there's one more that came in about kids, which is a super important, super important one. Okay. Um, somebody else wrote in, I'm struggling with extra need. need uh, she, it sounds like she has an ex, a child with extra needs and being a decent mom without losing her SHIT. I swear to. I know my anger is at myself for not knowing how to handle them. So she's upset with herself that she's, and I assume it's a she because it came in from an iPhone. Um, losing her stuff around the kids. So yeah. So what I want to say to you is you're hundred percent right. It's a lot of us hold, and this is what Christine and Sharon were just talking about. A lot of us hold stuff about ourselves that we don't like, and then we put onto others. Know that as a mother, we do, and a father, we do the best we can. That's it. Got it. No. So not during these six classes, but definitely in the three months, we're going to get more into shadow work because these six classes, we won't be able to. But there we have our light side, then we also have what's called the shadow, the dark side. So I think Jennifer typed in earlier, I think it was Jen typed in about the shadow side of always looking for love. Like that's a shadow side. It's a shadow until you know it, right? The dark side, it's like, look for love, where is it, right? Or like the imperfection, the perfectionist, that's, these are examples of shadow side. So the shadow is just as important as the light. And if I lose you, my apologies, um, it's just a really deep conversation. The light is as important as the dark. And so we all get mad at ourselves for a dark side. I shouldn't get mad. I should be nice. I should be like the world's perfectionist, especially when you enter the spiritual work. I should be, ah, I'm just gonna that. Guys, we're human. We have a light and a dark, okay? There's nothing wrong with the dark. And I want you to hear that from me very loudly. There's nothing wrong with your dark, your fear, your anger, your worry, your resentment. Bottling isn't good. Christine and Sharon were talking about emotions, feeling them. An emotion is energy in motion. So we want to feel it. Yesterday, my son, we just moved into this place. Third thing, we've been here three weeks. He broke three things. And I'm like, seriously? So I had my little, dude, like three things on the dishwasher. It was all, it was, most of it was fixable, except for something in the fridge, whatever. But it's like, you can lose it like that. And I was like, you know what, hon? I know you're 15. I know you're growing. And it's okay that I got mad at you for a second. And mm -hmm. it's okay that I lost my SHIT for a sec. And it's okay because you're not going to exist on this planet without a dark side. You're just not. 
but the, the children choose our parents for their dark side for what their dark side's gonna be, and on and on and on. And again, if I'm losing you, don't worry about it. Don't worry. But what I want you to get is your children have chosen that. And what we do is we beat ourselves up. I shouldn't get angry. I should be nice. I should be spirit. I listened to Eckhart Tolle today. I listened to Oprah. I got this. Guys, be who you are. Be real. Okay? Continue to do the work. And then as you do the work, you'll show up in more love. And you'll be kinder to yourself with the dark, the quote unquote darker times because the darker times aren't bad, aren't dark because one of the more advanced causes of this work is how do I embrace the part of me that I don't like? There's nothing wrong with those parts of us. Does that resonate to you guys? We're good? Awesome. Are there comments? Christine and Sharon, do you want to add anything to that? End on a big one, eh? Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Are there comments or questions, guys? You guys are good? You guys have been absolutely amazing. I've loved teaching this. Christine and Sharon, you guys are good? Yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone. It was thank awesome. You. We'll be back on Wednesday at 530. Awesome. I'll send you, I'll put the link on the URL where y'all found the Zoom thing. I'll put the there, thing there. Cool. Awesome, guys. Love you guys so much. We have Bye. the best Monday ever at home. <laughs> Ciao, guys. Bye.